especially with all these rise in cases again. Yeah, I know it's not looking good, is it? Okay, I'm I'm about to click go live. Okay. Yeah. Speak soon. Okay. So I think we can start. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. I'm Charles Melville. I'm the president of BIPS and it's a pleasure to introduce our speaker Shabnam Holiday, who unfortunately had to postpone her talk uh, due to illness um, earlier in the year, uh, but now she's happy to give have another go and thank you all for uh, your confidence that uh, you're signed in and uh, looking forward to hearing her talk. Um, this is the second of our uh, webinars. We have another one uh, coming up in October, on October the 22nd, which will be given by Andrew Newman, who is at Edinburgh University. Uh, so for now, uh, Shabnam is talking about Iran in global international relations uh, from the perspective of the importance of area studies. And as you can see on her screen, she's Associate Professor in International Relations at the University of Plymouth. And we're very grateful to you, Shabnam, for agreeing to do this. And of course, it's a very topical topic. Uh, and so the floor is yours. We have just over half an hour altogether. And when Shabnam has finished her presentation, um, we can have some questions and um, I will uh, relay the questions to Shabnam. So if you write them um, identifying your name and your question, we'll endeavour to answer them. So thank you very much and Shabnam, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Charles. I'm very pleased to be here to take part in BIPS's lecture series and indeed to be part of BIPS as the director of the Modern Research Project, which is entitled Iran and the International. A few years ago at a Symposia Iranica, Professor Robert Hillenbrand made a speech. He said that those of us who work on Iran often feel quite isolated in our academic departments because we are usually the only person in that department or indeed institution working on Iran. I find this isolation sometimes features in my wider academic community of politics and international relations or IR. I think this is largely to do with the fact that many do not really know much about Iran and the complexity of its history, societies and cultures. Iran, like all societies, is complex. It is this environment that has influenced my broader approach to my research. So this afternoon, I would like to make two interconnected points regarding the relationship between IR and area studies. First, IR needs area studies if it is to remain faithful to broader understandings of the international. Second, a closer relationship between IR and Iranian studies is helpful towards the breaking down of the East-West dichotomy and the seemingly static borders and categorization of the West and the rest. These are important not just in terms of a better understanding of Iran, which is often only seen in terms of the enemy or threat by many, but also because of the need to provide an inclusive global curriculum and diversify curricula at all levels of education. Not just in IR and other social sciences and humanities at the tertiary level, but also at primary and secondary school levels. I should say that my intention is not to dismiss any other part of the world. My main focus is, is Iranian studies because this is, my this is my field of research. However, I imagine that many of the points I make could be considered in relation to other parts of the world, especially those that are considered the other in Western academic institutions and by many policymakers. Similarly, my aim is not to dismiss other social science disciplines or the, all the humanities. Rather, I speak from my experience of international relations. I also speak from the experience of my children being educated at the primary level and the type of questions that they ask about other countries and other societies. Diversifying bodies of knowledge and curricula at all levels is essential if we are to be more inclusive. This afternoon, I will first address the discipline of IR, focusing on how the international is understood and why it is an important discipline. However, one may feel about the idea of international relations as a discipline. Our academic world has departments, national societies and journals associated with IR. 
These play an important role in deciding what is included or not included as IR. I will then clarify what we mean by area studies and also address how area studies and knowledge associated with it can be perceived. These two issues provide the context to both the topic of my research and my approach. Broadly speaking, I'm interested in Iran's relationship with the international. My current focus is the idea of world order. I would argue that IR is an important discipline and one worthy of attention for two reasons. Firstly, approaches to IR inform the nature of foreign policy decision making. Indeed, many who go into politics have done IR or a related discipline at undergraduate and or MA level. Naturally, the curriculum that they have been exposed to will influence the decisions they make later. Related to this is the foreign policy of states in relation to Iran. As we all know, the US, for instance, has had a tremendous impact on Iran. Many scholars have highlighted that US foreign policy and some US media illustrate a narrative that simply presents Iran as dangerous and irrational, a threat or enemy. We are familiar with Bill Clinton's labeling of Iran as a rogue state and George W. Bush's axis of, elite, of evil label. More recently, Donald Trump has referred to Iran as a rogue regime, a threat and a destabilizing destructive force that fuels sectarianism and requires isolating. Iran is given these labels because it is seen to not comply with the norms and values of a so-called Western liberal world order that is thought to govern the rules for relations between sovereign states. These are represented in global institutions. These labels are important because the implication is that Iran is presented in such a way whereby it is always the rogue static other that is fundamentally different to the forever benign fluid self in the context of both IR and foreign policy. My research endeavors to explore these dynamics. In addition to being a discipline that influences the world of international politics, IR is worthy of attention because it also seeks to explore and better understand the nature of social interaction globally and our knowledge of the world. IR is concerned with the international. There is acknowledgement that this is difficult to define. While how the international is understood is diverse in the discipline, I would like to focus on two approaches. This is because of my particular research interests, the relationship with Iran in the scholarship, and because of the potential for the relationship between Iranian studies and IR. On the one hand, the international is understood in terms of the interaction between sovereign states. It is in this school of IR, realism and neorealism, that the foreign policy of states are often examined. This includes discussions around national security and survival in a world order that is seen as anarchic. Crucially in this approach, the international sphere of politics is seen as independent from the domestic sphere of politics. There is also a lack of appreciation of the complexities and contingencies of history. The state is seen as the only actor in international politics. Broadly speaking, such approaches are considered as mainstream IR. For many outside of IR, this is the main perception of the discipline. As a result, the discipline as a whole is considered as having no regard for history, culture or domestic politics, among other things. Related to this, there is a trend in IR that seeks to develop grand theories about the entire world and how different actors such as states deal with each other. Here, assumptions are often made without appreciating that actions may have a historical context that go further back in history that one would like to recognize. Similarly, contemporary actions do not exist in a vacuum. Rather, there is a relationship with domestic dy dynamics at both social and governmental levels. These are complex, regardless of where we are physically located. As a whole, we need to appreciate the complexity of societies and how these complexities can influence relationships between different countries. There's a growing and substantial area of IR that questions and rejects this mainstream approach. This is critical IR. The many strands of critical IR have critiqued mainstream IR for its failure to address gender, race, appreciate history, 
and domestic politics, among other things, and for being largely West or Eurocentric or based on the global North. It is important to note that critical IR encompasses a broad range of ideas that are not necessarily in agreement with each other. Nevertheless, such approaches also have a broader understanding of the international. For instance, in the area of international historical sociology, there is discussion of the international that goes beyond the interaction between sovereign states. International historical sociology is an area of IR that brings together historical sociology and the study of the international. In terms of its contribution to IR, its aims are to highlight the sociological influences on the international, but also the need to bring history back into IR. In this subdiscipline, the international dimensions are stressed. Here, there are already many parallels with Iranian studies. And indeed, there's an extant body of literature that takes this approach in relation to Iran and IR. Furthermore, in this area of IR, there are debates about what constitutes the international. The point being that the international is more complex than the relationship between sovereign states. Rather, the international should be understood in terms of relations between social forms, and the international is also integral to society at the local and national levels. So on the one hand, a historical sociological approach to foreign policy would highlight the historical and sociological influences on foreign policy decision making. On the other hand, we can highlight how international factors influence daily life and practices and vice versa. In addition to this, the relationship between communities can be explored, whether that is artists, musicians, faith communities, royal courts, or the authors of manuscripts. Furthermore, and significantly, this does not need to be restricted to the contemporary or the modern period, however that is constructed. The last 15 years in particular have also seen a vibrant debate highlighting IR's failure to actually address the globe, both in terms of theory building, as I have mentioned, and the scope of empirical research, despite its claim of being about international relations. This critique is also directed at theories developed in the context of Western polities that are then used to explain other parts of the world. Such theory building is problematic because generalizations are made without empirical evidence to support these claims. Consequently, there is a call for intellectual thought about the international from beyond the West and the global North. Broadly speaking, IR has been critiqued for the tendency to divide the world into the West and the rest, whereby the West is put forward as having political agency, while that of the rest is ignored. This applies to IR theory about the nature of the international and also to non-West or the global South as actors in politics. As part of this extensive debate and in response to it, Amitabh Acharya put forward the notion of global IR. Significantly, this idea was presented in his presidential address to the International Studies Association in 2014, which is the largest IR conference. Acharya argues that in order for IR to be global, that means including the entire world, it needs to aspire to greater inclusivity and diversity and be a discipline that transcends the distinction between West and the non-West. Furthermore, a global IR would include recognizing multiple forms of agency that embrace local constructions of global order and integrating the study of regions and area studies. These debates, among others, open up the opportunity for dialogue with area studies and also crucially legitimize area studies in the context of IR. This is vital in the context of the apparent disregard for the benefits of area studies in the discipline. So IR needs area studies, not only in relation to providing an inclusive global curriculum and body of knowledge and moving beyond categorization of the West and the rest, but also 
IR needs area studies if it is to remain faithful to broader understandings of the international in terms of it being integral to society at local and national levels. It is here that Iranian and Persian, uh, Persian studies scholarship can make a vital contribution. My aim here is not to explore the development and historical roots of area studies and its relationship with other disciplines. This has been done in some detail elsewhere. Furthermore, I don't aim to disregard existing scholarship that encourages dialogue between IR and area studies and IR and Middle East politics more generally. Here, constructivism and foreign policy analysis have been put forward as a means of bridging the gap between the two. Rather, my point is that despite this literature, the need for dialogue between IR and area studies still needs to be made. Furthermore, I believe that in the area of international historical sociology, there is further opportunity for engagement with Iranian studies that moves beyond state level politics and foreign policy. Crucially, area studies is not just the politics of a part of the world. Rather, it is the in-depth knowledge that is only possible through long-term study of societies. Importantly, it is multidisciplinary, incorporating the arts, humanities and social sciences. In terms of how area studies is perceived, I would also argue that area studies is a label given to research and knowledge that is essentially of some distant land. In the UK, this would be anything that is not British. In a West-centric IR, assumptions are being made, whether consciously or unconsciously, based on a researcher's knowledge about their society or another society. If knowledge is based on a society that is not their own, it is area studies. For instance, how many history, politics, sociology departments across the UK have one, possibly two people working on Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, etc., but several on the UK or the US? How often is the former category considered as area studies, while research on the UK or the US is considered as politics, sociology, history, etc.? These observations are not necessarily new, and in response, there has been some scholarship on the relationship between IR and area studies. There have also been interventions on how to do global IR. These are certainly welcome interventions, interventions and they contribute to legitimizing the knowledge associated with area studies. However, I feel that there is still some way to go. Despite the idea of a global IR and debates about how we understand the world, there is a, still a tendency when it comes to Iran to perceive Iran, including its history, political cultures and arts in essentialist and reductionist terms. Iran is perceived in terms of geographic location. Here, the world still appears to be divided between the West and the rest. Furthermore, it would appear that these borders are seen as, stat as static, impenetrable and eternally present throughout history. Furthermore, certain values are associated, either consciously or unconsciously, with the idea of the West. This affects how we understand Iran and knowledge associated with it. This is not just in the context of traditional or mainstream IR, but also in the context of critical, including post-colonial IR. The implication of this is an inability to appreciate Iran's intellectual heritage as both Eastern and Western, has always, as historically always been part of a global network whereby ideas have traveled and that Iranians have the agency to, and indeed do, engage with the intellectual regardless of its geographic heritage, whether that is IR theory or Western political thought. The fact that these assumptions and categorizations take place in a discipline <clears throat> that claims to analyze and understand the international system and the, world, the way the world works indicates that for many, there remains a, lack of, um, remains a lack of understanding of societies that are not their own. Of course, it is impossible for a single person to have in-depth knowledge about all societies. Nevertheless, to the, the extent to which assumptions are made suggests a way of viewing knowledge and the world that is so ingrained. Thus, building on existing scholarship, I hope to offer an additional way to encourage engagement between Iranian studies and IR through international historical sociology. I also believe that for a better understanding of the international, interdisciplinary and collaborative research is essential. Furthermore, the multidisciplinary nature of Iranian studies 
allows engagement with trends linked to other disciplines. I would like to end with saying that area studies is crucial because we need to convey the complexity of societies, regardless of where they are physically located. This is important now more than ever. Area studies are essential to providing inclusive global curricula at all levels of education. In terms of Iranian studies, BIPS is already playing a vital role here. This has been the rationale behind the Modern Research Project. A multidisciplinary workshop was scheduled for April 2020. Sadly, this was cancelled due to COVID-19. It was to be an exciting programme covering the arts, humanities and social sciences. There is every intention of rescheduling the workshop. The focus on the international builds on several previous BIPS research projects. There is a vibrant Iranian studies community that explores all aspects of the arts, humanities and social sciences. This is evident both in the excellent scholarship that BIPS has had supported and other ongoing projects. But crucially, I think there are opportunities to hear to build on extant Iranian studies research and move towards further interdisciplinary and collaborative research. This will contribute to facilitating a better understanding of the international, an important aspect of which is a move away from the West-Rest static categorization. I would like to thank, end here, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Shabna. It was a very interesting um, presentation, which I'm sure is preaching to the converted as far as your audience <laughs> is concerned. Um, I'm not sure if we've got any questions yet, but I might just start by saying um, that it's, it seems to me that a great many historians and scholars uh, of every stripe who are working on Iran seem to um, produce a lot of work about Iran's international relations, but from a historical point of view, or I mean events in the past or recent events, whether it's the um, oil crisis or I mean many other things, um, where Iran's relations with the rest of the world are involved, like the Qajar period and uh, you Absolutely. know the Great Game, all the rest of it. And this is, um, I mean, essentially presumably uninformed by any uh, international relations sort of uh, theory. Yeah. Uh, so I would I would say that on the whole, um, this sort of brief uh, perception of the situation is that the historians and the cultural historians um, should be uh, thinking they should acquire some of the theoretical basis of international relations to also enrich their own studies as well as the other way around yeah. that you've uh, you've been referring to. I don't know if that's a, a reasonable characterization of the field. <laughs> Um, I think there is such a wealth of research on Iran's international relations, as you say, historically. But there seems to be some kind of disconnect between what students and scholars of international relations, and I guess this is the problem of disciplines, that this information doesn't necessarily, and this important research, doesn't um, cross the boundary between disciplines. So you have an instance where IR scholars Often, you know, Iran may feature in some case study analyses, but there isn't enough of Iran in IR scholarship. So, you know, it's a shame that um, it's increasing slowly. There is more in IR journals, but there's not enough going backwards and forwards for those interested in, you know, changes in world politics to engage more with the extant literature um, and also perhaps an, the, a move towards those historians that are working on that to engage a little bit more with the IR theory. But I think that's why it's so important to have collaborative research because if there's a dialogue, we can help. I mean, for me, it's really important that those who are reading IR journals, they won't be reading Iranian studies journals. They will be reading IR journals to know more about the complexity of Iran and its relations globally and historically. Well, we've got two questions, one from Nazli Tabal-Tabai. I don't know if you can see them, Shabnam, but she's um, 
uh, mm. asking about the um, culture as a crucial part of associating evolving international identities. Uh, can you can you see the question? So the culture as hang on, let me just have a, a crucial part of associating evolving international identities. Following the line from the Iranian constitutional revolution, what is the conversation that we are not having about the future role of cultural diplomacy? Crucial associating evolving. Um, I think certainly um, culture plays an extremely important part of um, Iranian national identity, and I think Iranian national identity plays an important role in Iran's uh, relationship with um, those outside of Iran or with the international system. My own research um, on Iranian national identity, focusing primarily on the Khatami period, but also um, placing that in a historical context, show that how um, Iran's cultures of Iraniyat and Islamiyat played a very important role. Um, and this builds on existing scholarship, which highlight the importance of religious nationalism um, in the Iranian revolution. So um, I think that is very, very important. In terms of the cultural diplomacy that intersects with UK-based UK Iranian diaspora, um, I think there is a very important role to, for um, non-state level, for community-based level um, interaction. And I think this is a growing, of growing interest to um, IR um, scholars. And I think it's this area, this kind of interaction that can be, um, be brought to the forefront through an international historical sociolo sociology um, approach by looking at the historical context for um, relations such as this, um, but also looking at how, you know, these communities are not isolated, there is engagement taking place. Yes, well, thank you. Uh, we, Edward Wasnage has a question, which is actually something I was uh, thinking about myself. I mean, clearly there are people in Iran doing uh, IR studies. Yes. Uh, and I wonder um, how familiar you are with that and whether th they're obviously having a, a different viewpoint from the Western orientated one. But are they able to be independent of it? I mean, are they developing other theories that are perhaps more in line with um, you know what what you were talking about and, and the sure. question is how, how much can we do to foster their their discourse as well yeah um well actually a lot of the references i made in my powerpoint presentation are from scholars that are based in iran mm. um and i think it's very important and i'm very reassured to see that you know western uh, journals that are considered as part of the western academia that are based either in the uk or the us are increasingly engaging with scholarship from iran um from Iranians in Iran. Um, I think there has been, I have, I mean, one of the questions, one of the points I made in the presentation was actually in reaction to some of the comments that I've seen at International Studies Association conferences, where I was told that Iranians shouldn't engage with um, Western political thought or IR theory because they should have their own school. And I think that is a, a somewhat problematic approach because if, a school of thought develops in Iran, you know, that's wonderful, but, and, and, you know, great, but it shouldn't be the case that they shouldn't also then engage with IR theory and IR textbooks. Um, and that's why I made the very important point that is that we have to uh, engage with these ideas. Um, there is a history of engaging with um, Western political thought, um, but also for us, those of us who are located outside of Iran, it's our role to also engage with that literature and bring it to the forefront in academic um, research and also to our students. We have one also, which you might like to answer briefly. I mean, how easy is it in Iran for these sort of studies to be carried out sort of independently with, without, I suppose, in a way the question is, you were referring to domestic politics coming into the equation uh, to some extent. Um, I don't know if there's a, a straightforward answer to this. I mean, there are plenty of scholars in Iran doing good academic work. I don't know how much restriction the, there is on that. The, um, the A lot of the issues that I have raised in, in this um, talk um, are addressed in the scholarship 
um, that is coming out of Iran that is published both in IR and um, IR journals in Iran, but also IR journals in based in either the UK or the US. Um, but I think um, what there is opportunity for, and I think this is what I'm trying to encourage, is that there's this, there's this idea in international relations at the moment that we need to look further back in history to understand the rate and the nature of international relations, okay, going back to um, antiquity and, and before. Um, and also there is this real um, desire in the discipline to appreciate um, intellectual heritage from other parts of the world. And through that process, in my experience, what has happened is that these very rigid categories have developed where Iran is simply seen as the, the East and the rest. And there's very little um, belief or engagement with the idea that Iran, like many other societies through antiquity, have engaged with different um, inter bodies of intellectual heritage. Um, and I think that's how both in the study in the community in Iran, international relations community in Iran, and also those of us working on Iran outside of Iran can really um, play a very, very important role. Well, we have uh, Isabel Miller. Hello, Isabel. We have a, a question on how much can uh, uh, culture, art and history interact with environmental studies, uh, which is a nice question. But of course, uh, environmental studies is an important topic in Iran as well, uh, as everywhere now. Um, I think generally, I mean, the cultural uh, relations are the thing that most people grasp on, aren't they? When political relations are so difficult, you feel at least one can go on uh, appreciating Persian culture and literature and so on, even if the um, political situation is very difficult. And that may apply also with environmental studies, really. Um, perhaps um, the question is more generally, not just about Iran. Yes, I'm, I'm not familiar with um, a lot of the literature on environmental studies, I have to say. Um, however, I think um, there is a very dynamic and vital um, interaction between these other areas, art, history um, and IR. And I think what can be done is to appreciate how in artistic circles, um, both historically and in the contemporary, how much the international has played a role in those um, and, and, and making more of a point um, about that. Um, I hope I've answered the question to a certain I think so. Well, that, that's great. Well, we're beginning to get near the end of our allotted time. Um, and actually, there are no more particular questions. So I, I'd just like to... Um, close the session if we're ready to and, and thank Shabna very much for her very interesting and stimulating talk and just to say that if anyone is so inspired by this that they want a proposed a research project uh, there is a deadline coming up fairly soon in um, early October uh, for the, our next round of grant applications uh, and uh, the details of that are on our website as indeed are um, details of all sorts of other exciting events uh, and so um, I do hope you'll stay tuned in to uh, what we're doing at BIPS in these uh, rather extraordinary times and uh, trying to reach out to a wider audience and providing some stimulating topics for discussion. So thank you very much once more, Shadnam, and thank you all for listening. And uh, this closes our session. Thank you.